Facebook. So we here. We in the heart of this right here. The reason I decided to go live is with the Democratic National Convention coming to Philadelphia. Black lives being assassinated in the streets. And we don't, no one is really having this conversation. Some of us are, but there are a lot of us who aren't having this real conversation about why, why black folks got issues with the way they are treated in their communities. So we're gonna start with talking about divestment. We're talking about divestment, we're talking about a system that's been going on since before the 40s. But it really took shape around 1950, 1960, when you have what's called white flight. And white folks, what they did is, in order to maintain a system of segregation, they fled the cities and they moved down to the suburbs. Now this is, this is all knowledge that we have and that we know. But I'm putting that out there so you understand the conditions that you're gonna see are the, the result of 60 years of divestment. So when white folks moved into the suburbs, not only did they go to the suburbs, they also took all their dollars. So when you look at a lot of the urban areas, you get somebody like Donald Trump who's talking about make, make, make America great again. Well, to make America great again, you have to first recognize that America abandoned the inner cities and they put black, brown and poor people in the inner community, inner cities, <clears throat> and it became what was known as the second ghetto. It was a space where in most instances, ethnic groups, they gravitated to themselves. But in this case, black, brown and poor were forced to move into areas and they cannot leave these areas. I promise you, ask anybody who's living in, a, in an urban area, you think they really want to live here? Yeah, they got family here, but they all want a better life for themselves. But they can't leave these spaces because they can't afford to get out for a lot of different reasons. Now, I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. I'm here on, on, on 21st and Diamond in North Philly. This is a section of the city don't nobody want to talk about. But there are people, there are families that live in these areas. This is still a community. But this is a community that has been beseeched by economic divestment. By homeowners who left these areas that still own the houses, abandoned lots are now in these spaces, a va uh, vacant land is in this space, and no one can do anything with it. So I'm going to show you one house that's right behind me. I don't know if it's abandoned. I believe somebody may be living there. Here's one that somebody else is living in. But you notice on this strip, the majority of the houses are all abandoned. Yo, how do you have a city? How do you have a city with this level of, of abandonment? You don't find this in the suburbs. But you, and you don't even find this in all of the, all of the city. But I promise you, you come into what are considered the, the, the most deprived black neighborhoods, was recognized as the ghetto, this is what you're gonna get. And this is not, this is not, this is not how America should be. So when we talk about make America great, I talk about let's make these spaces great for the people that are living here. Come on. Where is this level of ab abandonment acceptable? We'll talk about it being acceptable in, in other countries. And we'll pretend like we don't have a poverty issue here in this country. But we do. We got a major poverty issue in this country. And it's not just in North Philadelphia. You find it on the west side of Philly. You'll find it in Asbury Park, New Jersey. You find it in Atlanta. You find it in New Orleans. You find it in, in Detroit. Flint, Michigan ain't the only, person, only place that's having problems with water having problems with these kinds of conditions. You find this in Cleveland, Ohio, where the Republican National Convention was just at, but I bet you nobody was talking about these issues within, within the convention. But I know there was folks in, in, in the, outside the convention who were talking about these issues, trying to raise some, 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 put some light on the fact that this is how this country has us living. We ain't gotta live this way. Now, this has been something I've been putting out there for most of America and the world, anybody else is watching. But this message right now, I'm putting it out here for African Americans in this country. You, if you're a professional, I don't care if you're a professional athlete. I don't care if you're a professional uh, white-collar worker. I don't care if you're a professional blue-collar worker. You got a couple of dollars 
yo, get back in here and invest in these spaces. Yo, let's, let's, let's do what we have. We have the capital. We have the capability to make our spaces great. We don't have to wait for somebody else to take our spaces and transform them. Within my network, I got architects all over the country. Yo, this is our dream. This is our playground. Get out here. You can acquire properties for five, ten, fifteen thousand dollars. Get out here and do something with these properties. We want to talk about solutions. Yo, how's anybody gonna trust in us, do anything with us, if we're not willing to do it our own selves? I just showed you a whole block. I promise you, you could probably buy that whole block for like, like a hundred thousand dollars, a whole block. And I know you can do this all over the country. But hundred thousand dollars, you can turn around and you can invest in that block, and you can you can transform it. Seventy-five. I don't know if I got seventy-five, but I might have a couple of. I got a couple of coins for you. Here you go, Barry. Thanks, No problem, man. If we want, if we want change, we want to bring about change. We got to be that change. We can't look to everybody to make these things happen for us. Your systemic racism, institutional racism, these things are real. What I just showed you is an example of institutional racism. A young man just asked me for a couple of dollars. Excuse me, he asked me for some change. My man looked like he's younger than me. That's poverty. In America, when I know I can drive down the block about 15, less than 15 minutes away, and you got folks that are living way better. Divestment didn't happen in there, but divestment did happen in our communities. So I ain't going to keep going on, but this week, I'm going to be showing you a lot of inequities within our spaces. Then I'm going to call all of us to stand up and say, nah, we ain't having it no more. I'm talking about bulletproof glass that's almost six inches thick when you go to a, a fast food restaurant. I'm talking about going to a Chinese restaurant to get some food and you can barely see inside the building because the glass is so yellow. I'm talking about uh, uh, businesses in our communities, a family dollar that looks like crap in our community. But you go into an affluent community or predominantly white community and that family dollar looks like the Taj Mahal. I'm talking about driving one minute from one space to another and it looks like you're in a whole new world. Like someone cut the lights out. I'm talking about real, real differences, real change, real issues that we experience every single day, real stress we deal with every single day. And people who come in our communities, they don't even see it because they don't care. They can hop on the expressway. They can hop on the interstate. They can hop on the train. And they'll never, ever get a chance to see what, what this looks like. So when we talk about Black Lives Matter, they don't understand what we mean when we say Black Lives Matter. Because they've never even experienced what it's, what it's like to be a black person in this country. Especially if you're poor. So, this is what it is. I'm about to sign off. For those that are viewing, thank you. For those that, that are interested, I'll be back on every day this week. Since the De Democratic National Convention is here, I'm going to have my own national convention <laughs> all right thank you all for watching stay tuned for more same time same place every day up until the, until the democratic national convention is gone